Shalom. I want to start off by giving all praises on and glory to Yahweh, Bahashem Yahweh Shai, Bahashem Rakakwadash. All blessings, honor, glory, and power be unto the Heavenly Father, whose name is Yahweh, and His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, whose name is Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles and the elder bishops of Great Millstone who taught me this truth. And salutations to the elect scattered abroad throughout the four corners of the earth. My name is Amon Gabar, back with another lesson. Lord willing to edify and to feed the lambs of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai through the Holy Spirit. Rakak Dash. Lord willing, this is edifying straight to the point. This is going to be real quick. As I posted in the community section about 30 minutes ago. All right. So if you want to know what you know what I'm talking about, you could just go back and check the community section and refer back to that. But pretty much, with all these things being lifted, if you know what I'm talking about, you should know what I'm talking about. You saw lifting, he's lifting this and lifting that, and saying you don't need to show this anymore, you don't need to show that no more, whatever, whatever. If you're paying attention to privacy, you're lining, lining things up with privacy, you're lining up current events of privacy, and so on and so forth, then we should know what time we're approaching. All right? What time we're approaching, pursuing, a, as, I, as I also posted in that, um, in that, in that community section post, from 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, which um, I'm not going to get it. It's there. You know, when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction shall come upon them. And as you see right here on the screen, I'm not going to click on it, but that's what I'm referring to. So they saying peace and safety. All right. They saying peace and safety and we can feel it in the air. You know, this, you know, tensions are so thick, you know, you could cut it, you know. Things are escalating behind the scenes. You got you got major things going on behind the scenes. All right. As far as uh, the, an upcoming food crisis. All right. And, and you know, the, the man himself warned that there's going to be another. He said, even though this 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 particular, you know, what is going away or or it's calming down, there's going to be an even greater one. Oh, he said there's going to be a next one. All right. Y'all know what I'm talking about. You know, fill in the blanks. You know what I'm saying? And that's why it's important to continue to take heed and watch these videos and, you know, stay in the loop. So you're not outside the loop. Because somebody that's now watching for the first time don't know what I'm talking about. But for those that are diligently watching, you know what I'm talking about. So this man is saying, and, and not, he's not the only one. Other people are saying that there's going to be another one. Ironically, right? So-called ironically when this one or these particular ones are, are going down. Hey, this man is not going to, he's not going to turn back from his NWO agenda. He's not. All right? This is all part of it. He's not going to say, oh, you know, come on, man. Sirach, the 12th chapter, 12 and 10, Ecclesiastes 12 and 10 says, never trust thine enemy. Never trust your enemy. Never trust thine enemy, man. You know what? I'll get that. Ecclesiastes 12. Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 10. Because these people out here trust in the enemy, but we don't trust the enemy. All right? And you, how you going to know who the enemy is if you don't, if you don't know who you are? <laughs> if, you, if you don't know who you are, then how you going to know who's your enemy? You know what I'm saying? So you must know who you are to know who's your enemy from according to according to the prophecy, according to as it is written, who's our enemy? You shall be sold unto your enemy for bondmen and bond women. Alright? Be enemy from the womb. Ecclesiastes 12 and 10. Never trust thine enemy, for like as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. When iron begins to rust, it is inevitable. It's gonna rust until unless unless you cut out that that iron, unless you cut it out, remove it, and destroy it. And and set it apart from that iron it'll continue to rust so is the wickedness of this this you know so-called white man esau all right though he humble himself and go crouching yet take good heed and beware of him and thou shalt be unto him as thou hast wiped a looking glass and thou shalt know that his rust had not all to uh, had not been altogether wiped away all right so he his 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 wickedness cannot just be you know 
you know, just taken lightly. You know, it, it got to be just he got to be destroyed. OK, you, regardless if he humble himself, he come all pretending to be meek, humble and lowly, vulnerable, you know, take take good heed of him because that's how that's how they all of them represent themselves. Like they, they like they wouldn't do no harm to nobody. But these are the same people that conquered this conquered this earth. All right. So now let me go back to here. Luke 21 and 34. It says, and take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged. Your heart meaning your mind. Your mind, all right? Your mind being overcharged with surfighting and drunkenness and cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. So take heed, all right? Take heed of ourselves. Least our mind be overcharged with the with with the drunk with the drunkenness of this world, the so fighting is like the, I guess you could call it like a, like a, the hangover of drinking, you know, dizziness and and the effects of being drunk. All right, the effects of being drunk. Drunk off of what? Off of this world, the cares of this life. All right, because this world is nothing but distraction. You know what I'm saying? And and things are gonna happen where. You will, you know, it will seem to be trying to distract you and take your mind and focus off of this truth and this word and doing this work. But beware that. Don't let it, don't let it creep up on you and, and take you out. You know what I'm saying? Or take, take us out. I speak for myself first and foremost. You know, when shit happen, beware that it's, it's, it's part of the cares of this world. When things happen, you know what I'm saying? Always, always have in mind the truth. Our shield and buckler. All right, the knowledge, the wisdom, and the understanding. All right, now we are we in a time where, you know, brothers, and you few sisters out there that watch and say, are going to be losing jobs. You know what I'm saying? Going to be in in a, in, a, in a position of difficulty, in a straight in a straight and narrow path, which that's the the only way to the kingdom. All right, that straight and narrow path. Okay. The scriptures tell you that wide is the gate that leadeth to destruction. And there be many that go that um, find it. So it is a narrow path. And what makes it even more narrow is knowing this truth. Because now you got to carry yourself a certain way. You got to be disciplined and carry yourself a certain way. And, and you, know, you know you can't find an easy way out. Because see, people outside, people outside this truth, they, you know, for them, they'll find an easy way out. They'll find an escape route. And do something that's contrary to, to the doctrine or something that's contrary to this walk. All right? This journey and this truth, this faith, that, that straight and narrow path. And when they do find another way, pretty much they fall off. They fall off course. They fall off the path. That straight and narrow path. So there's only one way. You know? So let us not be overcharged with the suffiteness, uh, suffite, suffiting and drunkenness and the cares of this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. Because, hey, that day is at hand. Another major thing that's going on is the wars and the rumors of wars. Wars and rumors of wars. All right? Wars and rumors of wars. That We are, we are literally hearing the, the, the wars and the rumors of war, the, them drums beating right now. So we know we in that time where this man is going to implement that, that, that MO to the T, to the capital B system. All right? Crash the dollar. Bring in that new system. And and that'll be the, the fulfillment of Revelation the thirteenth chapter, verse sixteen on down. All right, that's that's all of that thing, all of that's coming, all of that is coming, man. And and guess what? It's gonna shock and rock this earth. It's gonna shock and rock the world as we know it. These people are in for a major surprise. All right, that's why First Thessalonians five said, um, um, damn. Slip my mind, <laughs> Salakia. I said I, I said I ain't have to get it, but you know what? The spirit want me to get it. No matter how much it come out, it gotta come out. First Thessalonians five and three. Uh, I'll start one. It says, "But of the time and season, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that that day, that the day of the Lord, so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they, not not us, but when they, all right, not not you." But when they shall say peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them as travail upon a woman with a child, and they shall not escape. 
All right, so we are lining up the prophecies, the things written in the scriptures with what's going on now. And if this is the time where they're gonna say peace and safety, then we should, what what should we what should we expect next? Sudden destruction. All right, sudden destruction. Okay, because guess what? This ain't because before the nuclear destruction, which is gonna be the last destruction, there's gonna be there's gonna be other destructions going on because the Lord said that He said Luke twelve and uh, twelve and forty nine. That he come to send fire on the earth. And what will he be if it already be kindled? So the ultimate fire is the missiles. But there's going to be fire uh, uh, prior to him coming with the fire. Isaiah 66 and 15. The fire of the missiles and the, and the chariots. The fire of the chariots. Second Ezra 13. You know what I'm saying? So he's coming with fire. The destruction. But there's going to be destruction already happening. All right, destruction, the, the destruction of Babylon, destroying this so, uh, uh, society, this economy, every everything is going to be destructive. The prophecy about people invading one another with swords in their hand because of the lack of bread, all of that is part of the destruction. So it's going to come upon these people as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. And, and a, a massive, pe massive pestilence is coming, and this ain't going to be no pestilence where. People got to, you know, it's going to be called fake or, you know, people making videos about fake hospital beds, fake, you know, ambulance and all that. We going to see people drop dead left and right. Psalms 91 about uh, thousands shall fall by thy side, but no evil shall come nigh unto, unto thee. All right. So we going to see it. We going to definitely see this. And I pray and hope to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai. We pray and hope to Yahweh Bashem Yahshai that it's it's near. It's closer than it's closer than today. You know, <laughs> we wish this thing could have happened yesterday, but prophecy must be fulfilled. We hastening in the time of our Lord to come. And guess what? You know, he's he's definitely turning things up. You know, turning things up on the left hand side, on the right hand side, or on the right hand side first, and on the left hand side. Okay. So things are going to turn up. You know, how, the Lord is not going to prolong these prophecies, man. Yahweh is more eager than any one of us to establish this kingdom. You think we can't wait? Well, he can't wait, man. He's been waiting for two thousand, almost 2,000 years or, or, or over 2,000 years around that. You know, for, in our time period, of course, but, you know, in, in the heavens, is, is the time period is different. It's two days in the heavens to the Heavenly Father. But, you know, for... For, for, you know, for edification's sake or just to, so you can understand, for us, it's been 2,000 years, man. All right? To the Heavenly Father, it's just two days, but Yahweh Shah has been waiting. And he can't wait to establish this thing. Like it tell you in the book of Psalms, that the Lord uh, um, is sitting at the right hand of the Heavenly Father, waiting to make his enemy his footstool. So you think, man, listen, man, the Lord can't wait. Them, them Romans... Pontius Pilate, whoever he is today, the Romans that pierced him, you think you can't wait to make them their foot, uh, the footstools of him? In other words, have, have them under subjection? Absolutely. So, he ain't gonna, he ain't gonna prolong, man. When the Lord, the Most High, give that, um, that go-ahead, when Yahweh give that go-ahead to the son Yahweh Shah, Yahweh Shah gonna let the angels know, all right, it's time, let's go. You think he gonna prolong? Yeah, all right, man. <laughs> he can be fast. He can be hit fast in the blink of an eye. It says, But ye brethren are not in darkness that, that they should overtake you as a thief. All right? Because why? The brethren are watching. The brethren are anticipating it. When you're anticipating something, man, it's not going to catch you catch you by surprise. You're going to be up, ready, and prepared to deal with it. Rather than someone that didn't expect it at all. All right? So we expect, hey, man, we expect. Like, like like they say, expect the unexpected. Well, we expect the expected. All right? If you expect it, then... Because then, the prophecies are expected. It's not, it's not unexpected. It is expected to happen. You know? So it says, Ye are the children of light and the children of the day. We are not of night or darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as do others. But let us watch and be sober. Let us watch and be sober. Let us not sleep. Let, in other words, let us not go back into the world like others do or others did. But let us continue to watch and be sober daily. Watch the news. Watch watch the, you know, the whatever information brothers putting out there. 
you know, word spread fast in Israel. So one, you know, one information go out from another part of the world, it 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 probably reach here and throughout the four corners in probably like like four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, a minute. You know, for they that sleep sleep in the night, and they be and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on a breastplate of faith and love and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. Man, listen, this place is out of here. All right, this place, Babylon the Great, is out of here. So again, back in Luke chapter 21, verse 34, And take heed to yourselves, least at any time your hearts be overcharged with suffiting and drunkenness and cares for this life. And so that day come upon you unawares. So to hell with this life, you know, of course we do what we got to do to maintain and sustain as we should. But let it not over consume you or consume us. Let it not overtake us. Let us deal with it, but don't let it overtake you. And you fall, you know, and get all messed up and, and just, you know, lose faith or, you know, fall off course. You know, get lukewarm or whatever. It says, for as a snare shall it come on all them that dwell on the face of the earth. So this thing is going to come as a snare, a trap. A snare is a trap, a gin. So the trap is already set. All right, the trap has already been set, and now the, now it's about now it's about to go off, and you know the, the, he already set the trap, and now it's gonna go off, and then people are gonna get caught. All right, you set the trap, it go off, and what and the, the the prey gets caught. These people all pray. All right, the whole earth is gonna see that trap. So verse thirty six says, "Watch ye therefore and pray always, that ye may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass." And to stand before the Son of Man, who is Yahweh Shai. So watch, therefore, watch, watch, continue to watch. Continue to watch. Line things up with prophecies. Measure the time diligently, right? Like the scriptures say. And pray always. We got to always pray. Talk to the Heavenly Father through His only begotten Son, Yahweh Shai. All right? Pray. Pray to Yahweh Shim Yahweh Shai. Okay? That you may be accounted worthy to escape all these things that shall come to pass. Because it's going to get bad, man. You know, like we was getting into camp yesterday, Saturday, yesterday. You know, we we we, we love talking about how bad it's going to get. You know, people call us doom and gloom when we get around people, family. They done, they, done, they, they look at us like, we yeah, here we go again. He's going he's gonna to bring negative negativity. We ain't bringing negativity, we're bringing positivity. The destruction of this man's kingdom is positive. All right, it's positive, but it's negative to those that want to continue to be here. And, and, and like the scriptures say, though hand join in hand, the wicked should not be unpunished. So if you want this kingdom to go on, then you are wicked and you're going to be punished right along with the wicked. Okay, so we pray that we are worthy to escape Jacob's trouble, the famine, the plagues, the pestilence. Okay, all hell breaking loose, the, the, you know, the dollar crashing, the hour of temptation. All right, the hour of temptation that's gonna come upon all the earth. We we pray that we worthy to escape that, and and that we're worthy to stand before the Son of Man, bro. Yahweh Shai is you. <laughs> Yahweh Shai is coming back, man. All right, standing on that giant chariot that Ezra said appeared to look like the size of a mountain. We got to an answer to that man when he come. Everybody got to an answer to him. Like the scripture tell you that we all should, should have uh, must give account for what we've done. Whether it be good or bad, we all gotta give a account, give our account, and answer to that man when he come back. You know what I'm saying? You let that, let that, let that marinate, man. Let that, let that sink in. That we all gotta answer to Yahweh Shah when he come back to stand before the Son of Man. Knowledge and wisdom shall be the stability. Another word synonymous with stability is to be able to stand, stand and stable. So we, 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 hey, we, we trying, we trying, we hope and pray. That we are able to stand before the Son of Man, all right, when He comes back, because He's coming back soon. You know, the year Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai, turn up, turn up, turn this shit up. You know, turn this up, light this place on fire, man. You know, may Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai burn this place up. You know, let's get lit, like you know, like they say, let let's get lit. It says, verse thirty-seven, in that in that day or in the day time, He was teaching in the temple. Yahweh Shah, and at the time he went out in the bowl in the mount that is called Mount of Olives, and the people came early in the morning to him in the temple for to hear him. And that that's it. You know, that's it. 
you know, with the things coming to this world that's about to come upon this earth, all right, is going to rock and shake and break this planet, all right, not physically the earth itself, but the inhabitants of the earth, these people, all right, this is going to be major, and this is, this is our Lord shaking his hand over Egypt and, and this place, man. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, that's it. That's all I want to bring out. I pray and hope to y'all, Bosh, me out, shout out. This is quick, edifying, straight to the point. Until next time, I say shalom to the elect. Shalom.